Hi, and welcome to Behind the Scenes of Font Making. My name is Jillian, and I'm really excited to share some information with you today about making fonts. So Twindigo is the name of a hand-lettered font that I created. And just to clarify before we even really get started with this, so the word font can be used sometimes incorrectly to refer to different styles. So if you are doing some hand lettering, you might say that you have different fonts that you use um, such as a bouncy or elegant script. But in this case, I'm actually talking about computer fonts. So digital fonts that you can type with on your computer. And so Twindigo is one that I created and you can use fonts for personal use or you can actually sell them. And so Twindigo is something that I've, I actually originally created it for the purpose of just learning how to create a font and to use for my own personal use, but I ended up deciding to sell it and have made over $1,200 just in passive income by selling this font. So what we're gonna talk about today is first, why font making? Why do I love it? Why you might be interested in it? Then we'll talk about how to make it look handmade. So this was something I was really confused about at the beginning was like when you type with a font, it, it's pretty obvious that it's something digital and something with a computer, but it is possible to make a handmade looking font. So I'm gonna talk about that. I'll go over the overview of the process I used to create this font. So it did take a long time, like over a hundred hours from start to finish. So I don't have time to go into every detail, but I will give you a pretty good overview of the process in case you're interested in making your own font, which I hope you are. And then I'll talk about how you can learn how to create your own font. So starting off with why font making, I think that font making is a really unique way to apply your lettering skills. So a lot of people, when they start with lettering and calligraphy and they think about maybe how they can sell their work, they create things like greeting cards or wedding signs or prints, but font making is such a different kind of product. And there is a huge market out there of graphic designers and Etsy sellers who are looking for unique handmade fonts that's completely different from what everyone else is using. It can also make your projects run more efficiently. So when I first got into crafting, I had a silhouette cameo, which is like a cut machine, and I was making pop-up greeting cards. And I, there was lots of times where I, I was looking for a specific kind of font, and I actually bought several fonts, but I never really found something that was exactly how I wanted. So having my own font now is great because I know it's my own lettering, my own style, and it just makes it much more efficient to type out whatever lettering I want rather than having to write it each time. So you can make lots of different things with fonts like vinyl decals, mock-ups, wedding gifts. I'll show you in a second a wedding shower gift I created. And kind of like I mentioned, it's a huge business opportunity. So there really is a lot of people, there, there are people who create fonts who make like tens of thousands of dollars every year. I don't know that I'll ever get to that level, but I have made a significant amount of income on the side just, just by selling this digital font. And each time someone buys it because it's a digital file, I don't have to do any extra work. It's not like a custom, custom piece that someone's asking me to create. It's a font that's already been created and they just buy the file. And lastly, it's just so much fun to type with your own lettering. I remember the first time after I got everything in my font all programmed and the first time I typed with it, it was just the coolest thing ever. So here's just an example of the word wildflowers and the names at the bottom I made um, with my font rather than having to hand letter this and scan it in. And this was a shower decoration that my cousin wanted. So it makes it a lot more efficient to create some certain projects and it's just so much fun. So let's talk a little bit about a font that you type with versus hand lettering. Because at the beginning when I was thinking about creating a font that I wanted to look handmade, I was a little bit confused on how that would work. Because when I think of a font, I think of obviously you, you type it. So anytime you type, press a key, then you're creating a letter on the screen. And so they're all very consistent. Like every time you type the letter E, it's gonna look the same as the last time you typed it because you're using a computer versus hand lettering, which has some natural variation as well as planned variation. So natural variation is just the fact that you're not a computer. So I, every time you write the letter A, it might look slightly different just because it's handmade. And then there's also planned variation. So here's an example. Planned variation would be each time, 
like let's look at the word coffee on the right. So those two E's at the end of the word coffee, I, I purposely made them different sizes because I wanted this to look like a bouncy kind of script. So when I'm hand lettering, and you'll find that when you do some hand lettering, you'll probably be adding in some planned variation, even if it's just like in the word lettering, the double T crossbar is crossed together rather than having two separate T's. So that's the kind of planned variation that you can also incorporate into a font. So again, I was a little bit confused on how this would work like how do you possibly make it so that your font can mimic real life hand lettering and the big secret is using ligatures so a ligature is when two or more letters are joined as a single glyph so first let's talk about what a glyph is so a glyph is what's produced as a result of a keystroke or combination of keystrokes on your computer so when you type the letter a then you're going to get a letter a in return now you may notice that sometimes when you type certain things it automatically updates it and makes it something different so for example if you type a fraction like one fourth then it might turn it into on the right here it's like one that's one glyph that's one character so if you were to highlight it on your computer you could only highlight it as one single character you wouldn't be able to change the one and the four separately or similar like this uh smiley face if you type a colon and a parentheses it might automatically update it and turn it into a smiley face glyph. So you can do the same thing with a hand lettered font. So I have my font programmed so that whenever anyone types two T's next to each other, it's going to turn into this double T, which is a single glyph. And this is that planned variation that I was talking about. So this is what makes it look hand lettered. And it's the huge secret to making it look less digital and less like a computer and more like you actually wrote it. Here are some of the double letter ligatures that I've included in my font. So basically what I've just taken is some of the most common English double letter combinations and I made them different from one another because in the style that I was going for, whenever I do this in, in real life with hand lettering, I do make double letters different from one another. So I wanted to do the same thing for my font. Another kind of ligature you can create is letter combinations like like these. So the T and the H at the very top right there. When I do this in my normal hand lettering, I connect the crossbar of the T into the loop of the H. So I wanted the same thing to happen in my font. So now whenever someone types that letter combination, they're going to get the glyph that shows up with those letters connected. So there are lots of common letter combinations that you could uh, incorporate into your font. So like in English, the, the ING, that letter combination appears a lot. So you could create a special glyph that appears anytime someone types ING. And then in that instance, the G would look different than any other time you type the G out of context. So I'll talk a little bit more about this later, what this software is, but here's a quick look at the software that I used to show how I created that glyph. So the input on the left is the TCH, and then the output on the right means that anytime you type those letter combinations, it's going to connect the T and the H, and it's going to look like that. There are also other ligatures that I incorporated um, just to make things a little bit more legible and a little bit cleaner. So for example, on the left in my font, if you just type the F and the Y next to each other, then you can see those loops on the bottom kind of overlapped, which it, it's fine, but it made it look a little bit messy. So I just made a ligature to where they're not connected like this. So the ligature doesn't necessarily have to be for stylistic purposes. It could be for something like this, where you just want it to be a little bit more legible. Um, there's a couple other cases too, where I just, I thought that like when I was testing the font, I just thought it would look better if I changed it up a little bit. So here are some more examples of other ligatures that I've included. Another secret to making your font look hand lettered is using alternate letter forms. So these aren't ligatures, but they're, they're ways that letters show up differently depending on the context. So in this example, the lowercase e on the left is how it looks normally, but I have it programmed so that anytime you start a word with the lowercase e, you add that little that little entry loop you see right there um, at the beginning of the word, just because that's how I do it in hand lettering. I'm I'm actually adding that 
part of the E at the beginning. So I wanted that to show up with my font. So I know that was a lot. There's a lot of things you can do with the font just to make it look hand lettered with the ligatures and the alternate letter forms. And there's a lot of thought that goes into it, um, but some of it kind of appears. So for example, um, some of the things I had were actually pre-planned. Like I knew for the lowercase th that I wanted the crossbar of the T to go into the H, but then some of them came up during testing. So some of the spacing things or like in the bottom example with a capital T and the H, I thought that it looked a little bit empty in between the letters. So now I have it so that the H loop um, kind of extends to the left a little bit. And so that was a result of testing my font. And same thing with that FY that I was talking about earlier. The spacing I didn't realize was an issue until I tested the font. So I'll talk more about the, the testing phase in a minute. But now that I've given you a little bit of an introduction of font making and how to make it look hand lettered, I'm going to go over the font making process. So this is the exact process that I used in order to create my font, and I learned this in an online course. So I'm just going to go over the general steps. So the first step before you even start creating any sketches or doing anything on the computer is just choosing the general feel of what you want your font to look like. So in my case, I wanted it to look bouncy and hand lettered and modern, but you could think about what your signature style is. So that's kind of how I figured out mine too, was I, it was, I was using this style a lot in my own work at the time that I decided to create the font. And so I just looked at some of the sketches or some of the work that I had done, some of the practice pages that I had been working on that week, just to sort of see what I was working on at the time and if it would look good as a font. So just think about what your signature style is or what kind of font you want to create. Then once you have the general idea, you'll start creating your sketches. So sketches are all of the characters that you're going to need for your font. So you'll need lowercase and uppercase letters, numbers, punctuation and symbols, and then if you decide to include any ligatures and variations. So the way that I created my sketches was I just wrote out a bunch of words. Instead of writing out the alphabet a bunch of times, I just thought it would be better to get these letters in context so that I could get some of that natural variation I was looking at. So like in the word broccoli, you can see that the two C's, how I wrote it, I made the two C's different. So now in the font, when you type it, you'll see at the bottom there, instead of having two C's that are the same, it actually changes to two C's that are different in size. The next step is digitizing. So you can import your sketches. Now, if you do your sketches on paper with pen and ink, then you would scan them in into your computer. And I actually did mine in Procreate, which is an app for the iPad. So if you did it digitally, then you'd also still have to import your sketches into a program like Adobe Illustrator to vectorize them. So this was actually the first time when I was creating the font, it was really the first time I used Illustrator for vectorizing. And so I kind of had to learn as I went, but um, it's not that hard once you get the hang of it. So basically vectorizing means that you're turning rasterized images, which are pixel based into vectors, which means that they can be scaled. So this is a really important step uh, before you go into the font making software. So what I did was I actually, I imported the sketches and then since I wrote so many words, what I ended up doing was I cut apart all of my words into the individual letters and then I alphabetized the letters so that I could see them all next to each other and then I picked my favorite. So out of all of those, whatever, eight different A's that I made, I had to pick which A was my favorite that I wanted to use in the font. So here you can see on the left, the left column is what my original sketches looked like. And then on the right, it's what the final font ended up looking like. So it's lot, lots of similarities. I mean, it looks, looks pretty close to the sketch that I created, which is pretty neat to see now. So then the next step is importing it into the font software. So if you're on a Mac, then the software is called Glyphs. If you use a PC, then it's called Font Creator. So then once you have everything imported, then you're going to be assigning the shapes to the keystroke. So for example, the shape for the letter D, I had to assign it to the keystroke or the, the Unicode point so that when I type with a D on my keyboard, it's going to show up the shape that I've created. Then you look at spacing and kerning. So that's just the space in between the letters and how to make it look like they're connected. So for a script font, this is really important to get the spacing right so that it looks like your letters are connected to one another, but not too, not too close or not too far apart. And kerning is just if you have specific letters that need to be adjusted versus the default spacing. 
Contextual alternates are any time that someone types a certain letter combination, then you use a certain glyph and then you have to program that. So that would be like the ligatures that we were talking about or the alternate letter forms. So then after you've imported those vectorized images into the font software and programmed everything, then it's time to test. So when you test your font, you're going to be looking at things like spacing, overlapping letters, general readability. So the bottom screenshot is just some of the testing that I did just to sort of see some of the letter combinations and the things that I wanted to fix. Then if I found, found anything in my testing phase that I wanted to fix, the, this would be the time to revise it and to fix it up for going on to the next phase, which is marketing. So this phase is optional. If you decide to only use your font for personal use and you don't want to sell it, then of course you wouldn't need to market it. But if you are interested in selling it, then here are some of the things that you'll do. So first you'll create some preview images to show the font in use. So you can see at the bottom there, the happy birthday card that's using my font. So it's a lot easier for people who are interested in buying a font to see what it looks like when you make a project like this versus just typing the alphabet. Then you'll pick a platform to sell it on. So the ones listed here are just some of the options of some marketplaces where a lot of people sell. So I have mine on Creative Market and Etsy. And then you'll want to generate some buzz about your font. So if you have an Instagram account or a Facebook page or an email list or just friends you know who might be interested, you'll want to let them know that you have this font that you're ready to sell. So you can do things like show them maybe different projects that you could create with it or show them behind the scenes like your original sketches that you created. Just make people excited about wanting to buy your font. Now, the cool thing about selling a font is that you're selling a digital file. So even though you spend hours and hours, like hundreds of hours creating your font, once you're ready to sell it, you don't have to do any extra work each time someone buys it. So it's not like creating a custom piece for someone where every time someone orders like a sign or a card, you have to spend a lot of time creating it for them. For this, you've already created it. And then when they buy it, they just download the file. So just to summarize the steps, first you choose your style of your font and then you create the sketches. Then you can import that or scan it and digitize it. And then you'll be putting it into the font software to program all of the shapes to the correct keystrokes. Then you'll test the font and make any revisions you find in that phase. And then you'll market it. So if you're wondering how I learned how to do all of this, because it is a very long process with lots of details, but it's so worth it. Um, the way that I learned was through an online course called Learn Font Making. And Learn Font Making was created by Tila from everytuesday.com. And I'm really excited to talk to you about it because it was seriously the most comprehensive start to finish course that I could find on how to make a font. And it was really important for the success of mine. So Basically what she teaches you in the course is everything you need to know from preparing your lettering to everything about the software. I gave you an overview of the kind of software you need, but she walks you through every single step. And if you've, like for me, I never even really used Adobe Illustrator or the font software before. She tells you exactly how to do it step-by-step. Step. It's, it's amazing. Um, then she has a whole entire module on how to sell your font. So I gave you a few ideas, but I think she has like an hour long video of things to think about and how to sell your font and how to be successful. She's had thousands of students go through this course. Here's just a few examples of some of the fonts that have been created that have been profitable. And I created the font Twindigo, which has also been successful. So this is the only course that I would recommend if you are interested in learning, seriously learning how to create a font for selling. Um, and because of this, I'm actually an affiliate for her course, which means that if I promote it for her, I get compensated a little bit. So if you are interested in signing up for it, you can sign up through my link, which is lovelyloops.com slash learn font making. And I'll give you tons of bonuses that will really help you along the process. So the course is super comprehensive, but these are just some extra things that I thought would be helpful if you're creating your first font. So during the creation phase, one of my bonuses that, if, that you'll get if you sign up for the course with my link is a review of your sketches before you begin digitizing, because um, once you begin digitizing, sometimes you maybe wish that you had done something differently in your sketches, and I'll be able to help you catch some of those things. Um, I'll provide you with a list of suggestions and considerations. Like if there's anything I think maybe could make your font even better, I'll tell you at this point before you begin digitizing. 
I'll also give you a list of tons of multilingual resources that I found that weren't included in the course. And this is really good for profitability because there's lots of people around the world who are looking for fonts that can support their languages. And I know that was a big reason for the success of my font Twindigo is because I did include tons of different language uh, multilingual symbols that I'll tell you about in this bonus. Then during the testing phase, I'll give you the exact file I used so that you can just plug in your font and do some testing. And I'll also review your completed font before you begin selling it. So once it is completed, you can send it over to me. I can take a look at it. Just make sure that everything looks good before you begin marketing and selling it. And then in the marketing phase, so once your font is ready to sell, once you have it all set up, I'll give you an Instagram story shout out on our Lovely Loops account, which has uh, tens of thousands of followers of people who are interested in this kind of stuff, as well as a Facebook post in our group. So the size of our audience was pretty important in the success of our font at the very beginning. And so I think this would be a really good way to get your name out there to our audience. So if you're interested in signing up for this course, the deadline is coming up. This course only opens once or twice a year. So just make sure that you sign up by the deadline and you can go to lovelyloops.com slash learn font making and sign up using that link in order to get the bonuses. So just to quickly review some of the things that you get in the course, you do get lifetime access so you can learn at your own pace, plus free lifetime unlimited updates, start to finish step-by-step -step instructions and templates. It's just so comprehensive. There's nothing that she doesn't include in here. So even if you have no experience with any computer program, she walks you through how to do everything. She has a full module about how to sell your font. And there's also a private student Facebook group with super supportive hand letters who have turned into font makers themselves like me. And there's actually a separate Facebook group for if you have a Mac versus if you have a PC computer, just because some of the questions might be a little bit different. So it's a really great place if you do have questions to ask while you're creating your font um, that you'll definitely get the answers that you need. You will need some software in order to complete this course successfully. So you'll need access to Adobe Illustrator and then whichever font software uh, matches your computer type. So Glyphs or Font Creator. And there are free trials of those softwares available. So you will need a desktop computer in order to use them, but you can get a free trial to create your font with. And once you sign up, you'll get instant access to all of the course resources. It's super comprehensive. So I would recommend if you are interested going to this link, lovelyloops.com slash learn font making. So you can learn more about what's included. Now, don't forget to sign up with that link in order to get the bonuses that I mentioned and to sign up by the deadline because she only opens this course every so often and I don't want you to miss out. And you do get lifetime access. So even if you can't get started right away, you will be able to complete it at your own pace. Thanks so much for watching. I was excited to tell you about the font making process because it was a lot of fun and it can be really profitable if you do it right. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you again and we'll talk to you later.